Good morning. Uh, I am Melissa Dalgleish. I am the president of the Graduate and Postdoctoral Development Network, and I'm also the program manager for the Research Training Center at the SickKids Research Institute. Welcome to this GPDN update. I'm going to give a brief uh, update on what the GPDN has been working on over the last year, and then I'm going to turn it over to Jonathan Turner and his team for a more fulsome update on our benchmarking project, since that is one of our flagship efforts as the GPDN, and I know it's one that's going to be of major interest to many of you joining us here today. So for those of you who aren't familiar with us, the GPDN is the Canadian Consortium of Professionals who do graduate and postdoctoral development work in universities and in research institutes like mine across Canada. Um, most of us have roles similar to mine, many in career services and many in other uh, uh, student supporting and postdoctoral supporting units across campus. Uh, and we currently have about uh, 150 members. So as a GPDN this year, a large part of uh, the early parts of 2020 were spent working collaboratively as a consortium to support each other in transitioning our programming two virtual formats with the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we had national calls uh, weekly for many months over the spring and summer where we discussed uh, how each institution was dealing with tailoring uh, programming and transitioning programming to the specific COVID contexts of where they were and the uh, transition, you know, more or less depending on the institution to virtual programming offering. It was extremely helpful for all of us to be able to leverage the experience and the support and the technological knowledge of all of our colleagues. And I think doing that work together certainly helped to ensure a consistent and a high quality level of uh, program availability and service offerings across Canada. We had two other major online events this year, uh, of which we are very proud. The first I want to highlight for you is our week-long student development symposium, which was led by Jackie Brinkman at UBC. And Jackie brought together career uh, and professional development practitioners across Canada to offer a full week of free programming to any student or postdoc who wanted to join. We uh, funded this week by uh, securing sponsorship from basically every major Canadian uh, university and research institute across Canada, and therefore we're able to uh, offer a week of really high quality and, and exciting uh, development training and discussion and networking opportunities to students from across Canada at no cost. And we're hoping that this is going to be the first of many years of, of running this event for the GPDN. Our other big online event this year was our online conference in AGM. As many of you know, the GPDN typically meets immediately before CAGS, and we conclude our conference with a joint session with CAGS on the first day of the CAGS conference. Unfortunately, that obviously was not possible this year because of COVID. And so I want to extend a big thanks to Angela Rook, our conference chair, and our new uh, vice president of the GPDN for hosting our really excellent online conference, where again, as a group, we come together to share uh, best practices and you know technological solutions and ideas for uh, new things that we can be doing to serve our students and postdocs better. Our other big priorities as the GPDN this year uh, was improving and codifying our commitment to anti-racism and to justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. So we have uh, begun offering uh, quite a lot of new uh, EDI-focused training to our members to help ensure a, a consistent level of access to justice-oriented and anti-racist support for our students and fellows across the country. It's also going to look like uh, the inclusion of a new EDI lead role on our GPDN executive, um, which uh, the election will open for sometime later this year. Uh, we're also working on transitioning to nonprofit status so that uh, we have a, a little bit more latitude to uh, generate revenue and offer more programming uh, to our members and to students and fellows. And that will also include a new executive role of operations manager who will help uh, run those budgets. 
We're also, uh, thanks to uh, Danuka Garatna and uh, Tara Christie, uh, looking at a new website and a full rollout of our new branding. So hopefully we'll give us a little bit more visibility and enable you to find this a bit more easier, um, more easily on the World Wide Web. So I wanted to keep this update very brief and right now I am going to share my screen with you and turn uh, this over to uh, Jonathan Turner and his team so that you can uh, get a much more fulsome update on uh, the benchmarking project and uh, the information that you can expect to come out of them and how it's going to serve you at your various institutions. Thank you, Melissa. I am the project manager for a joint CAGS and GPDN national benchmarking survey of both graduate and postdoctoral development programs. This project would not be possible without the generous support of CIHR, NSERC, SHRC, and MITAX. If you know of other institutions who might be interested in supporting this project, please connect with Ian Wearley or myself. We are very fortunate to have two outstanding interns working on this project. Lauren Tracy is a PhD candidate in molecular genetics at the University of Toronto, working in a lab at the SickKids Research Institute. She is writing her thesis. Annalisa Chrysostomo earned her Master's of Education at the University of Toronto while working on this project and is now a student affairs professional. Lauren and Annalisa will now provide an update on our progress and overview of our next steps, beginning with Lauren. Thank you, Jonathan. So I'm Lauren Tracy, I use she, her pronouns. Uh, and I'm Annalisa, I use she, her pronouns as well. And as Jonathan mentioned, we'll be giving you an update on the benchmarking project called the Graduate and Postdoctoral Development Towards a National Strategy. So our project is driven by issues and concerns around career readiness shared across higher education institutions and employers. Practitioners at research institutions are seeing the importance of sharing and collaborating nationally across the sector to bridge what is being called the skills gap between students and employers. In 2016, a survey was developed to create a catalog of graduate development programs, which is now available on the CAGS website. And our proposal for this project is to improve and expand on this previous survey in order to better understand the scope and delivery methods of offerings across Canadian research institutions and assist in determining professional development training expectations, gaps, and what is required to add value to existing offerings. So our project aims are threefold. First, to facilitate data collection and distribution that is meaningful, informative, and fully captures institutional strengths, as well as areas for improvement to support industry leaders benchmark the best practices and innovations by obtaining a comprehensive view of graduate and postdoctoral development programs across Canada, and to update the catalog of graduate development programming and create a searchable online resource that can be updated over time. So this project, as I mentioned, is a reiteration of a project done in 2016, but with some key areas included. So these are equity, diversity and inclusion or EDI practices and programming geared toward equity deserving groups, documenting postdoctoral fellow programming, identifying collaborative efforts, including internal and external partnerships and approaches to design and assessment. Um, over the course of the survey development, we've also expanded the survey to include some more questions on the skills gap between trainee preparation and employer expectations as well as the early impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on programming. And our project also diff differs because we'll be asking not only administrators from uh, approximately 40 Canadian research institutions, but also administrators from various um, offices and units at each institution, recognizing that more than one department or office will contribute or be involved in the development and delivery of programs. So we just wanted to take a few minutes to go over some of the content and questions in our survey. Um, just to note, we use the acronym GPDP to represent graduate and postdoctoral development programs. So in terms of design and assessment, we have a number of questions on competency and skills models. So for example, we ask, how do you identify the skills needs facing students when developing specific components of the GPDP? 
And then we also ask about online software and tools for virtual programming, if and how participation is tracked, assessment methods, and training outcomes. So in terms of collaboration, we included a number of questions about internal and external partnerships. So for example, one of the questions we asked is whether there is a collaborative programming between GPDPs and other units. We also have the option to send a smaller version of the survey to other internal partners, as Lauren had mentioned, in order to get a more comprehensive view of program offerings and structures. So having MyTax on board, a nonprofit organization invested in professional skills development, really helps us develop some additional questions pertaining to specific partnerships with employers. So for example, we asked what skills employers have identified as their highest priority. It was also important for us to collect information specifically about postdocs. So for example, we simply asked what programming do postdoctoral fellows have access to? But we also asked about postdoc attendance and GPDP offerings and postdoc employment tracking. Our survey also covers questions regarding efforts related to equity, diversity, and inclusion an area that has become increasingly significant across research institutions in the wake of 2020 and 2021 social movements, including anti-Black racism and the Truth and Reconciliation Committee's call to action. So this section will address programming and programming efforts created with and for equity-deserving groups, including future plans to address diversity, inclusion, and, in, and inequities at your institution. The results will be re reported in, aggr in aggregate to encourage honest answers and protect anonymity. Um, we're also particularly excited to obtain data around adjustments, resources, and programming changes as a result of the pandemic. So this section of our survey emerged from the particular needs and challenges faced by both students and practitioners. So some pandemic-related questions include the percentage of programming moved online for the pandemic, the impact of the pandemic on various areas of program development, such as participation or approaches to EDI and assessment, and other key changes. So this will help practitioners as they continue to support students with online learning and virtual programming and services. So we are using the survey platform Qualtrics. It's a user-friendly and versatile platform and it allows us to ask a very wide variety of question types. And it also has multiple export and output options. So it's very flexible. Once the survey is completed, we will be conducting follow-up interviews as well with participants to clarify answers or obtain more information as necessary. We prioritized a multiple choice matrix style and numerical entry question types when we were designing the survey with downstream data analysis in mind. But we also included options for text entry in order to elaborate on nuances within answers. So many, because of the way we designed it, many of these questions can be reported quantitatively instantly through Qualtrics. Um, however, the qualitative responses will require a lot more thorough combing. So in terms of timelines, um, by the time this airs, we will actually have completed the piloting phase and we'll have preliminary results and feedback for revisions, um, which should be done um, very shortly. And that means that the full survey will be able to be disseminated to program administrators at research institutions across the country in late February. And we're aiming for a full, uh, full release of the results in the springtime. So we'll be sharing this data through a number of means, a written report, as well as a formal publication. The online repository that will be on the CAGS website and as well through various conference presentations, such as the Canadian Science Policy Conference in 2021, in late 2021. So just to sum up, um, our project will really provide a comprehensive and robust view of graduate and postdoctoral offerings and programs, for example, by mapping internal and external partnerships. It will identify institutional strengths and areas for improvement. And this will really help practitioners compare and adopt practices of similar institutions, for example, based on their size, demographics, program structures, et cetera. And it will capture emerging issues and priorities, thereby helping practitioners support underrepresented and or historically marginalized groups and support all students among, amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. And overall, we really hope to support practitioners' decision-making and improve programs that support a diverse range of students and student needs, ultimately leading to a more productive, skilled, and employment-ready graduate student and postdoctoral fellow population. So with that said, uh, we'd like to thank all of those people who provided invaluable support to this project, including our steering committee members, 
Dr. Kerr at U of T, other collaborat collaborators who provided valuable insights, the institutions who are piloting the survey for us, and our funding sources. So please feel free to reach out uh, to us via email at questionnaire at if you'd like to know more or have any other questions. Thank you.